Hi everybody, uh, my name is uh, Nicola Bullikens. Uh, I'm an architect and uh, Stefan uh, also, he's a student and uh, the blender guy. So um, I present to you um, a very special work. Um, in fact, uh, I'm uh, working more as a surveyor. And uh, in, uh, 19, uh, in uh, 2009, we were commissioned to um, uh, rebuild uh, virtually uh, a destroyed uh, facade of a very famous uh, monument in uh, Brussels from uh, Victor Horta. And uh, so we, <coughs> we had, in fact, to rebuild Mm -hmm. yeah. to rebuild this part of the facade that was uh, preserved uh, during uh, the um, destruction of the building and uh, acquired by uh, the um, city of Brussels. So the stones um, <coughs> uh, were lying uh, in a uh, wasteland and uh, there is uh, several studies uh, that uh, were commissioned uh, to um, see how this, um, all this stuff uh, can be rebuilt. Stones. <clears throat> so um, we had um, a warehouse to um, to put uh, all the stones. So we had also uh, to uh, remount the um, ironworks and uh, woodworks. And so we start uh, to scan uh, all the stones. We use uh, a structural light uh, scanner, which, which has uh, quite uh, issues uh, that uh, we had to also to solve. Um, and uh, if <coughs> in fact, uh, it's uh, like a 3D camera. We shot uh, um, 50 uh, 3D, um, 3D images per second, and uh, that are um, stitched, to, stitched together during the process. Here's the process, and so that's the result. So um, here you get a mix between the raw data and the final result. And uh, meanwhile, uh, the facade uh, were physically rebuilt uh, on the ground by uh, stone uh, carvers. So now Stefan uh, will, sh uh, will show you the blended part of uh, this project. So, one of the main goals of the project was actually to, to produce a final drawing that was not just a needleized, naive representation of the facade. We didn't want to have just a straight corner, some feature to, to sew curves in the center of the stone. We wanted to, to be able to maintain the scratches, the alteration, the bruises of each stone that we think are part of, of their identity, actually. What, uh, what we wanted to do was to produce a final drawing that, that was not just how the, the facade should have been, but how, we, how it was now. So, to do that, all, the, all these alterations have to be maintained through the whole process. So, we are talking actually um, of, uh, of very high resolution scans with, uh, with millions of, uh, of polygons uh, for, for, for example, one stone. Um, why, uh, another reason why we needed to, to maintain this, uh, this high resolution was because when, uh, when we are, we are, you are doing this kind of uh, archaeologi uh, sorry, archaeological stuff, um, sometimes uh, from the original planning of the, the construction, uh, differences happened. For example, here, as you, as you can see, the ironwork is connected in, uh, in this, this large ba balcony stone and uh, obviously are, are um, touching the stone in the, in the upper level there. But what, what we encountered was that the, the last one wasn't aligned with the, the other. So what was the problem? Was the ironwork leaning 
was the, the first tone misaligned. Actually, what happened is that uh, during the construction, something just goes wrong, and they had to, to put the, the ironwork in the wall, just uh, upside uh, the place where it should have been. Another example. Um, we can find where was the ground level, actually, just because some um, mortar, um, the, the, the cement wa was still visible in the, 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 the down part of, uh, of some, some stones. You can see in high resolution, there is very subtle, but it can inform us where was, uh, where was the, the ground. Another thing is that you can rebuild a building uh, horizontally, but there is some uh, some slight variation, like uh, in uh, in this part of the wall, where a, a physic rebuild is necessary to find some some uh, some alignment like this that were that were actually found only during the, the virtual rebuild. So actually, Blender is not well suited to, to deal with, um, with tons uh, of high resolution uh, scans, and it's not the point. But we had to, to, uh, to program some workaround to, um, to maintain this, uh, this high precision during the whole process to the end where we produce the, the drawing. So we had uh, 400 gigabytes of uh, our data. That's a lot of uh, little uh, hard drive. So this one are quite low, uh, I agree. And uh, we applied some, um, some technique from uh, real-time visualization. We, we use level distance, uh, proxies, and actually, each stone, uh, there were six, uh, 634, were decimated and, uh, and applied, and uh, a normal map was applied from that. We then uh, used uh, the proxy system of Blender. Uh, we somewhat somehow familiar with the, the proxy system here. OK. <laughs> so. Uh, what is a proxy system is that you don't use the, 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 the geometric, the, the mesh data of the file inside of the, of the stones inside your file, but you link some, uh, some empty point with, uh, with the, their position to an external library that contains all the geometric data you need. What it allowed us to have uh, three main uh, library source, so uh, you had uh, the source file in our resolution, you had uh, the first decimation and the second decimation. Through uh, a custom Python UE that, uh, that we had, we were able to, um, to select uh, a stone by his name and change it on the fly. Um, the, the proxy cap capabilities of Blender are quite good, actually, but um, they, they, they were not suited to, to rapidly exchange some uh, some uh, some uh, the, the sources of the, the geometry. So we had uh, our little script was able to 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 hack the the, the, the proxy system to 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 use the name of uh, each stone and uh, and load it uh, automatically. Um, another problem that we encounter is that, I don't know why, but uh, when you have lots of proxies uh, in, a, in a file, sometimes when you reopen it, some are just missing. The, the geometry is, is not linking anymore, and uh, we had to, to be sure that uh, it, it happens two or three times, but we had to be sure that one day uh, after the end of, uh, of our work, we don't open a blender and, okay, everything is gone. <laughs> Three months uh, <laughs> again, so we um, we we also use uh, the the strip to to be able to 
to recheck where are the proxies and, uh, and re-import the geometry if needed. So another problem that, uh, that we encountered was that when uh, the stones were, were scanned, that they were not just uh, on a turntable, uh, very aligned, and so on. We, have to, we had to hang them and, uh, and scan around, uh, around them. So uh, what was imported in Blender was uh, this kind of, uh, of object. So I let you imagine that uh, when you have uh, 600 stones, you want them to be aligned before uh, getting in some reconstruction. So what, uh, what we uh, actually have done is that um, we, we use the fact that uh, the, the upper side of the stones are flat, should be, and uh, that the, the sides are also flat to have a regular joint plan and joint surface. So we, um, we had another script that was, uh, that was just basically uh, doing uh, an orthogonal regression to find the best fit plane to, to the, the top of the stones and just align them horizontally. So it, uh, it saves us uh, a lot of work. A second uh, part of, uh, of our system was to, after having aligned the stone, um, to be able to specify one, uh, one surface, uh, mark all of the stones with some, um, some little anchors, and be able, in, uh, in one click, to just bring all the stones in the same plan with um, a distance, uh, a joint distance that was constant, actually. So it works very well for the, the first part of the facade that was flat, but uh, when we, we had to deal with curves and uh, round corners, uh, we had to, to basically do it ourselves. So the, um, the main reconstruction take uh, one year, actually. Uh, so the scans plus the, the, the rebuild. And what uh, we wanted to, to add at the end was not just um, use uh, some, uh, some software like AutoCAD and, uh, and take the outline of the stones. So we, back, we basically use the, the Blender Compositor to, to detect the, the edges of the, the stones and, um, and produce our, uh, our final drawing. Um, what we have done here is that we have three levels of uh, edge detection that, uh, that are basically mixed together with uh, some variation to, to give the impression of a uh, level of detail, not in the, the, the I don't mean the variation of geometry, but uh, a hierarchy of detail. So you have the, the corners of the stones that are blacker than uh, the little details inside. Um, basically, just to, to show you the, the compositing nodes, um, this part is just doing the, the layering of the, the edges, and uh, the last part w is uh, automatically um, reading, coloring the, the stones that, uh, that were missing. One of uh, the, the key points of the study was to find how many stones and which, which, what stones were missing from the construction. So, I will quickly show you um, some of the stones and how, how we, we reconstruct them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Perfect.
So this is one of the stone um, and brought it in Blender just after the scanning. And as you can see, there is a huge amount of, uh, of vertices here. So I will not use this one to, to, to show you the, the script, because on this laptop, it could take some time. Here. So the, the first part of, um, of our script was first to, to select what were the, um, the horizontal vertices. So basically, we are just uh, painting out of, the, out of the, um, the holes in the surface. Does this one work? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Here. So quickly. And then just choose what plan we wanted to align our stone with. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I tested times and times, and it has to go wrong today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. What is your principal matrix for each of the uh, OBG. So one time again, and if it, if it doesn't work, No, actually, this one was brought to to six to to to, um, to sixty, but uh, I think the the problem comes from the the fact that this one is in soixante quatre bytes, and uh, I don't see another reason. So, um, no problem. There is other thing to to show. So after the stones were aligned, we had to. I will just shut this one down. Here. Um, we had to, to align the stones together. So 
just a second. This is the base of the, the facade. And what we, we do, just open the script. What we do was also what we do was to um, to select uh, the the stones we want to move. And just add these empties on them. Okay, this one, it, this time it works. So as you can see, stones are aligned with, uh, with their neighbor. So this is just three stone, but when you have to do it for um, 100, at the same time, it, uh, it can save a lot of, uh, of seconds. Um, now I will show you the, the finished facade. Here. So here, this is um, our empties that are just containing the name of the of each stone that can be exported in our custom in uh, in a custom file format that is basically just a text file with uh, with the position and the name of the empty, and uh, we can uh, we can add here our libraries and just uh, sync all our proxies together. Hmm. Just change the library. Up. There and the last one. Perfect. So this is basically importing uh, the geometry of every stone. <coughs> it's just going to the, the, Z, the Z letter and uh, it's done. Yeah. So this is the, um, the rebuilt facade. And what you see is the, the low resolution mesh. So I will show you the, the examples in the slide here. So as you can see in low resolution, uh, you can't see where the, the iron work is going. But if you just change it to iRes, there, there is the, the entrance point. This also works for multiple stones. There. So basically, we would, it wasn't possible to, to just keep the, the geometry in high resolution and um, and just uh, rebuild the facade with the, the high geometry. We had to, 
to, to decimate it and to use the, the proxy system to, to fit it in the, the open in, uh, in the, the viewport. Um, so I will now uh, let uh, Nicolas show you uh, the, the website we have done to, uh, to showcase a bit of, uh, of our work and so, uh, so you, can, uh, you can go and see, what, uh, see by yourself uh, what we have done. Um, so uh, what I would like to point out uh, in uh, this uh, study is uh, that um, um, 3D scanning uh, does not fit very well with um, traditional uh, architectural drawing because uh, edge retrieval is very hard in uh, 3D scanning. Um, the, it's a very big issue. Uh, no, uh, there is uh, several approaches uh, that uh, can uh, retrieve uh, the edges. One of them is uh, reverse engineering. We consider primitive uh, surfaces uh, stitched onto the point cloud and uh, the edges are retrieved, uh, derivated from the intersections. Um, here we've used um, another kind of, um, of technique. Uh, and <laughs> okay. Well, another kind of technique, uh, which uh, is uh, direct edge extraction uh, from uh, 2D data. It uh, is done in 2D, so it's not uh, the real 3D edges, but uh, it's only a visualization of the edges. But uh, for our purpose, it's uh, sufficient. Uh, most of all, for those kind of edges, it was very um, difficult to, uh, to retrieve because uh, this edges is uh, fitting out in uh, the um, stone plan. So uh, this kind of edges is very, very difficult to, to have. Most of all, um, it um, manages the data occlusion. Okay, for, for example, you have uh, one stone, above it uh, you have uh, the, um, the ironry, another stone uh, in the background, and uh, the um, the woodwork uh, in the very background, <laughs> so uh, why not? Um, the last thing is uh, that uh, we not only have to record and uh, to present, but uh, also to, um, to, to produce the data um, for the visualization for the world study, including uh, the, um, the woodworks and the, and, uh, the ironry, so we make we made a multi-level uh, visualization possible. So here's the texture color, the missing stones. The number. And so. <coughs> mm -hmm. And um, it's uh, accessible on the web, so uh, it's uh, very easy to uh, for the archaeologists or the um, for the cultural heritage uh, purpose to uh, to show so, something. Uh, it's online, so uh, it's very easy. So. <laughs> You have some questions? Actually, we at the, the time we, we built the, the website, the, there wasn't still some uh, really convincing web gel preview. So basically, I, I will just I will just connect the computer so we can be on the real internet. Um, we, we use a, a commercial plugin to, to, to showcase some of the, the work in, uh, in 3D. So 
So our basic idea was to use WebGL, yes, but that wasn't possible at the time, so perhaps in the future. Another, another question? Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You, do you mean uh, how can we move the, the image at the, in the website? So, so basically, the node setup is just to to produce the the edge, the edges with the the, the just the the edge option in the render, uh, blur the the result, use the uh, the black level and white level of the uh, RGB curves uh, nodes to um, to to change the the the, the the level detection of the edges and uh, invert the, the resulting image and uh, mix it with other level of uh, black and white level to, to just add the, the hierarchy of detail. The, uh, yeah, the, the uh, yeah. We we try to do something a bit similar, but just <laughs> with the photos actually. But uh, the the architecture of the website could uh, could could fit with uh, with something more more complicated without problem I think but uh, it's just that uh, we hadn't the time or nor the the ID to to do it but why not <laughs> Um, no, the, there is no material actually. Uh, we we try to to reconstruct the the material by taking a resolution picture of the 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 the, the, the stones, and uh, I can show you show you what uh, what we have come up with. Just a second.
This is an early reconstruction. Everything is not there. I know the, the, the colors are a bit funky, but uh, it's the, the original one, so. <laughs> Basically, to have the, the edges, you just have to, to go in the, the render part and uh, select post-processing and edges. Choose the, the threshold. But with the node setup, actually, you don't have to, to choose one uh, in, this, uh, in this step. And uh, just press F2, F12 and uh, you have your edges. This is our tech.
uh, so one point uh, each millimeter. So that's the raw data. Oops. So each color here is um, when, uh, one frame. So that's uh, what see the, the scanner during uh, the, the process. And uh, we have to stitch all that into one scan. It's uh, quite a very uh, time demanding process um, because uh, you have uh, to do global referencing. So, if, um, any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.